Hey there, Bitcoin and crypto traders, party time for the bulls. Congrats. Let's look at some of the longer term outlooks. Let's look back at what we have been watching over the past few months and the buy signals that have presented themselves over the past few weeks in just a moment. Please like and subscribe. See you in a minute. So we'll start off with the dollar here, which right now is in the ideal condition for asset bulls. Daily lower low breaking through 93 is a great sign. No daily trend change, no weekly higher low being set. We're looking down at 91.74, our recent bottom, and we're much closer to support than we are to resistance. It's a good sign if you are a metals, stock, or crypto bull. You want that weak dollar. Bitcoin, beautiful follow through, beautiful volume. We've got news catalysts left and right. We were in a daily equilibrium for a month. We had bearish news headlines that did not break us bearish. And now we have bullish headlines that are leading to follow through. The first one was SQ adding $50 million into Bitcoin. That came out before the equilibrium broke, made a bullish entry on that news. Bull break right after it. Daily bull flag confirmed, increasing bull volume, highest price in a year and a half. Monthly bull flag confirmed. All systems go for the bulls. That being said, you are not looking to enter right now. <clears throat> it's very simple. And this happens all the time for me. There's no, no reason to feel bad about it. I watch thousands of stocks. I watch crypto all the time. I watch commodities all the time. I miss trades all the time, but I have to recognize when I missed a trade. The technical analysts and technical traders entered Bitcoin on the bull break of 10,800. And in my last video, I said 9,700, I meant 10,700. But they entered on the bull break of 10,800 on October 8th. That is your entry signal as a trader. And I made that entry. And then I saw later that Peter Brandt made that entry shortly after. The late trader enters on the daily bull flag. The first signal was now 16, 17, 18% ago. The second late signal, the daily bull flag, was now over 10% ago. Anybody entering now is the herd entering on a headline after all the traders have already entered bullish. So just be aware that that is the current scenario. Can we keep going up from here? Yes. But if you put yourself in a habit of buying breakouts that look like this, more often than not, you are going to have poor risk reward scenarios on your entries and you're probably going to lose more than you win. So again, you can chalk it up and say, I wasn't paying close enough attention. I didn't have my trade game plan outlined, whatever it was. Let's go back and look at the longer term outlook. We've been outlining two scenarios for months. Scenario number one was a two month lower high and a tightening monthly two month equilibrium into mid 2021. That is still possible, but we would have to reject from 13,800 and then pull back down under 10,000. It's not the more likely scenario. The second scenario we were watching is it a bull flag on the monthly time frame? The answer now is yes. So the entirety of the last month, I am sitting here and just constantly analyzing what is the probability of these two scenarios. And I saw a daily month long equilibrium. And I said to myself, okay, if this equilibrium breaks bullish, the odds are going to significantly shift in favor of the monthly bull flag being the most likely scenario, which is why, again, when we're in a tightening daily range and we get a bull headline, I mark it bought, and now we have the monthly bull flag confirming. Bulls are not out of the woods. Clear 13,900, you have no resistance until the all-time high, no meaningful resistance. We can find a couple levels in there, but it is smooth sailing over that level. Again, it's not home free just yet. And what could lead to a rejection from 13,800? In my opinion, it would require another big drop in the broader market and fear hitting financial sectors everywhere. Whether it's a dump on the election, who knows? Whatever that is, that would be the scenario that would lead to a rejection from here. So we need a break of another thousand plus dollars to be home free, so to speak, and extremely comfortable. 
So now 9,813 is our most important midterm support level. And we are riding the hourly 12 period. Look at this hourly 12 period. For the last two days, that's the only thing I've cared about because it's so clear. If that support is holding, the bulls have complete control. They have not lost that support at any point. This morning, we had bullish news that PayPal is now incorporating cryptocurrencies to buy, sell, and buy and sell goods on their platform. That is leading to this new leg up. That's not the reason for the breakout. It is the reason for the continuation of this breakout. Fortunately, this is where being a stock trader plays off. I had my platform open on Fidelity and I got a news alert literally the second that that PayPal news came out. Was able to put it in the chart guys chat room, put it on Twitter, posted it to Nuggets News community, all within four minutes to allow timely, fast action, which has now resulted in three or 4% of upside. So I'm gonna keep that time frame. If we're holding the hourly 12 period exponential, the bulls have complete control. We're looking at 13,000 psychological resistance from here. This is the market environment where your neighbor and your sister's uncle, I guess that's your uncle as well, are gonna be asking you about cryptocurrency now. And again, if you wanna be entering, in my opinion, you are looking for your, our back burner trades. First five minute oversold conditions, first hourly oversold conditions, Search back burner chart guys on Google and you'll find the video where I talk about that. But after a significant bull move, first five minute oversold conditions generally gives us a good entry. RSI being overextended, out the window, does not matter. I personally will make no decisions on selling anything based on overextended RSI. It's all trends for me. If I wanna be protective of my profits, maybe I, ent maybe I exit some position on a loss of the 15 minute uptrend. But I'm not gonna exit into strength on this move because it's clearing such a notable hurdle and we're getting so much media attention and headline attention. And more is to come. We're gonna see more, com more companies putting their US dollars into Bitcoin and I am looking forward to when we see a household company name, whether it's Apple or Tesla or whoever, those would be you know top tier, but even mid tier company names getting thrown into the mix as well. That's still to come. So short-term support, 12,637. Hourly 12 period EMA support. I'm just walking a stop loss up on the daily time frame for my swing position. I did exit a little bit into this daily consolidation to lock in some profit and be very comfortable and to allow myself now having no urge to take any profit on what I have remaining. So I've got my long-term no touch. I've got my mid-term swing position. And I do have some capital that I will allocate to back burner trades if I'm at my computer when they do set up as little day trade flips. Bitcoin dominance chart, clear bull break. And this is making me even more confident, obviously, that I chose Bitcoin for my horse on this move. Very clear resistance for two months. Could not get over this level. We got real tight. We knew a break was imminent. And obviously, we got a significant bull break of the dominance chart showing us that Bitcoin is the name to be in right now. Bigger picture, we're gonna look for a monthly lower high to be the result of this dominance bounce because anything under 69.83 is a lower high, but a solid shift in the short-term momentum. ETH USD, just now getting over this resistance, need to clear 400 for a convincing break. And again, it's way behind what Bitcoin is doing. We're 20% under the high of September while Bitcoin is way over that level. So I still have some no touch ETH exposure, but in the short term, our focus is on BTC. There is a lack of resistance after 400, but we would have to see the ETH BCC chart bounce, which it's trying to do. And the two day time frame was our guide here. We had an equilibrium. And in one of the recent videos I said, as long as this resistance does not break, BTC has all my attention and I don't care what ETH is doing. I only care what ETH is doing if this resistance level breaks. We broke it bearish. We're not getting a ton of bear follow through on the break, but we would need to see a four hour trend change back to the bulls. Then we would zoom out and look for a daily lower high to be the result of that bounce. So we can see ETH start to gain a little bit comparative to Bitcoin on this bounce attempt, but a lot of longer term trend changes are needed for it to be sustainable. And I'm gonna be watching to see after this initial move up on Bitcoin, do we see some healthy Bitcoin consolidation and then the major altcoins catch up a little bit as their Bitcoin pairing charts see some oversold bounces, which is the case for ETH right now. Bulls want to clear 3116 for short-term resistance, and we topped out at that level on the initial attempt. 
Link USD, big daily bull move. So a daily confirmed downtrend with zero follow through means zoom out and look for a weekly higher low. And that's what the bulls are hoping is happening here. Significant bounce, V-shape off the low, potential top fishing play with 11 to 11.24. If we were to reject from 11.24, it's a four hour equilibrium to be watching, but we are a bit extended on the shorter term timeframes heading into that resistance. So that's the kind of play where I wouldn't be a confident bear. <clears throat> but if I had a position, maybe I look to enter a top fishing short as a bit of insurance, just in case we were to reject from that level, it would essentially be locking in gains and then covering that short on a four hour higher low. That's a key level to be watching in the short term. BNB USDT, daily downtrend confirmed with no bear follow through, zooming out and looking at not even enough consolidation for a weekly higher low, or I should say a weekly bull flag to be forming just yet. It's a weekly inside bar. But always a good sign to see confirmed downtrends. If you're a bull, confirmed downtrends with no follow through. Anything under 3104 is just a daily lower high. So we'll need a daily trend change back to the bulls, but it's keeping this chart healthy. And if we pull up the two day time frame, I don't like it. It's all right for clarity, but we'll stick with the daily for now. Have to regain the daily with a higher low and higher high to keep this potential weekly bull, bull break alive. The last thing the bulls want to see is a fail here, a weekly lower high, and then a weekly equilibrium for another month or two. XMR USD, another one. Daily confirmed downtrend straight into a big green day means zoom out and look for a potential weekly bull flag. And at this point in time, that is a weekly bull flag. And when I'm looking to play a bull flag as an aggressive bull, I actually did it with Tesla just now with a day trade today. So let's go with an example there. So what I did on Tesla on the five minute time frame was recognize a cup and handle. And I saw the high of the day, consolidation failed to break the high of the day. I tried to short it here and I stopped out break even recognizing zero bear follow through. As soon as this green candle showed up on the five minute time frame, I said, that's a bull flag. That's a cup and handle. I am making an entry in the 428s. I'm putting my stop under the low of that candle. Why is my stop so close? Because if that level breaks, it's not a cup and handle. It'll be an equilibrium at that point. If that level holds, it's a cup and handle and I'm going to get a win out of that trade. So I'm risking one and a half dollars and my reward is four plus dollars. So we got follow through and I aggressively entered for that bull flag play. So on XMR, if I want to aggressively enter as a bull, I am using that low of 116.79 as my stop now. And I look at the four hour time frame. Looking for a four hour lower high compared to 130.40. So if I want to be an aggressive patient bull, I would wait, hope for a lower high, enter on the higher low, use that level as my stop. If I stop out, it's likely not going to be a weekly bull flag. If I don't stop out, it likely is. And we'll need that four hour trend change back to the bulls from there. So four hour equilibrium here as well. It's similar to Link. The only difference is Link has made it all the way back up towards its resistance and is a bit stronger. I'm much more confident in an XMR four hour lower high than I am on a link four hour lower high due to that fact. Dash USD has seen a lot of volatility back and forth. I like the 12 hour time frame here for an equilibrium. High of a breakout, definitely gave back a ton of that breakout by pulling back by 15% plus. <clears throat> and now we're looking for a 12 hour lower high under 82.30. This could potentially play out for another two, three days. So watching for a lower high, then we'll watch for a higher low compared to 7040. Nice tightening range to be watching. BETUSD is on a laggard watch. It's a falling wedge on the daily time frame that has broken bullish, but has not broken price levels bullish. I need to see a break of 012. So we broke bullish. Now we back tested and held that previous resistance now as support, and we need a break of 1189 and 1204 to confirm the daily trend change. And we need it on increasing bull volume. So worth watching as a laggard play if we can break resistance. And we'll wrap it up here again. XRP USD or XRP BTC. This is why I'm not covering XRP because the bears have absolute complete control. And this is one of the worst performing altcoins. I know there's a ton of battle out there, fundamentally speaking. I don't care about the fundamentals in any way, shape, or form. 
All I know is for two plus years, it has been the weakest altcoin comparative to Bitcoin that I've been watching at any point. Can't deny the charts. I don't care if XRP has the cure for cancer. If the charts are going down, that is more important. Well, talking about trading wise, not bigger picture for humanity, of course. So we're looking down at 1904. And that is a must hold level because that is pretty much, it's not our all time low, but it's the lowest price we've seen in a very long time. And again, XRP is getting run circles around by the bulls in the cryptocurrency space. And LTC to a certain degree, except even LTC right now is trying to bounce a bit on its Bitcoin pairing chart. Still a ton of work to do, but it's a bit better than XRP. Both are in the doghouse as far as bulls are concerned. One last check in on Bitcoin, keeping that momentum going. Hourly, 12 period, EMA support. Congrats to the bulls. Establish your game plans, react to your game plans. Do so without emotion, do not chase. And we'll see you soon. Have a good rest of your day, do good thing. So for 20 years, the previous owner would just mow the leaves into the grass. So the soil here is very loamy and just walking around barefoot, you can feel all the moles and voles that have dug a network of tunnels all through the yard. So I'm starting to collect some of the leaves. Don't want to deplete the lawn of carbon, but that's a good source to use, whether it's mulching in around things and stamping out weeds or covering soil to allow moisture content to stay in it so things don't dry out too much in the spring. So playing around with leaving leaves in a bunch of areas in the yard, but taking some along paths and such. Things getting big enough to start picking consistently.